Hello, alright Queenie 7 and welcome back to Grand Tactician, but welcome to a new game and that is because the DLC Whiskey and Lemons has finally been released and so we have expanded the game to cover a both a smaller regiment size campaign in 1861 but more importantly to allow you to play through the Civil War as an individual officer uh, and to manage your career uh, which I am Super excited to uh, to get in and uh, have a go at. So the DLC actually it's Monday evening when I'm recording this. The DLC dropped on Friday, but I was away uh, all weekend camping with a local Cub Scout troop, uh, so I've not been able to get in uh, into the game until now, and I am champing at the bit to get going. I had about 40 minutes uh, just this afternoon, uh, just to. to get work my way around the menus and see what it looked like on the main map so I would vaguely know what I'm doing when I came to record this video um, and uh, I just wanted to keep going and play more so I'm, I'm super excited to see how this plays out in the long format so what are we going to be doing then um, so I do want to take a look at the smaller campaign I think that sounds quite interesting uh, but I'm not going to do that yet I suspect there are probably lots of other people covering that anyway. Um, I am going to look at the uh, campaign as an officer, but we're going to start the summer of 1861. So we're going to do the grand campaign. You can't, mostly you can't do the uh, spring version, you've got to jump in at summer. Um, and we are going to play through as an officer and see what, uh, what shenanigans we're up to and what victory we can bring in. Uh, so I will put on or delays, I will put on fog of war, and I will put on officer feuds, because that sounds like fun things to be involved in. Uh, and I think this time we will play as the Union. We obviously played through a campaign as the Confederates in our last run. Uh, so why don't we try and be a Union officer? We'll put these both up to mediocre. Um, partly because I don't know how competent the AI is going to be because it's going to manage, well, 90% of things that are going on. Um, and I have a bad feeling that if we played through as Confederates, we might ultimately lose. But that might be a fun thing to do after to see how that goes. Um, we'll put random policies on for the Confederates so they don't have to go historic and let's go oh, let's go expansionist shall we let's have a, a go west a manifest destiny um, let's take industrialization and let's have a railroad I'm not necessarily picking these because these are the strongest ones but they seem like fun so uh, in terms of game mechanics that gives us more support in the, the western states California and Oregon also raised troops from there so uh, similar to what do we have in the last one uh, Nicaragua and Cuba uh, so additional manpower pools industrialization so we can put more money into our factories and a Union Pacific Railroad because railroads are awesome uh, I think it's a credit rating boost as well that's actually pretty good but anyway I like railroads so I'll pick a railroad one uh, yeah let's jump into it and see how we go so this is the first thing we have to design our character. Uh, so I have a little bit of an idea of a character in my head, um, and essentially, uh, I'm, and I'm not going to go like crazy on the the roleplay elements, but I think it's nice to have something kind of guiding the playthrough when you're trying to act as a single officer and not think too solely in terms of game mechanics. So we are going to be uh, essentially a Scottish soldier. Yes, you know, I am Scottish. Uh, from uh, you know the fairly poor end of the uh, aristocracy, I suppose, or new industrialist class, who's looking through uh, essentially armed conflicts for advancement uh, and hopefully riches and maybe a little bit of glory, uh, because it's his only way, real way, to improve his social standing. Uh, and we can see, you know, joined the British Army, uh, whatever, didn't work, didn't get the opportunity, so has left and gone abroad to find. Uh, find better routes for advancement and we are going to go with the name of Alexander Leslie because well they are very two very Scottish names for start uh, and also because Alexander Leslie was a historic well in fact there's more than one but there was at least one historic Alexander Leslie who was a soldier of fortune in the 1600s early 1600s he fought for kind of Sweden and Poland and ultimately became a general for the Russian uh, Tsar uh, so well, in fact, at the same time, there was another Alexander Leslie, who ended up being field marshal for Sweden and then came back to be general for uh, both Scottish and English armies. So, lots of pedigree in that name. So let's keep it. Uh, in terms of nickname, let's go with Jock. 
So for anyone unfamiliar, before that became a nickname for athletic high schoolers, it is the diminutive name given to anyone of Scottish origin. So it is to Scots what Paddy would be to Irish. So there we go, we'll say uh, Alexander's compatriots weren't particularly imaginative when it came to nicknames. Uh, okay, what portrait? I mean, I like this portrait. That's a, that's a good looking outfit and a beard to match. I can support that. Uh, what should we go with? Well, a bit of salt our effect, but ah, too clean shaven. Gotta have some whiskers. Ah, a little bit rough and ready. Ah, I forgot you can upload this remembered from a, from a last playthrough. I could even put my own ugly mug in there. Oh, what a shock that would be. No, I think we're going to keep this fine looking gentleman. Uh, oh, our frames don't really matter particularly much. That's a fine frame. Uh, flags. Flags, however, are incredibly important. Uh, there are a lot of flags here. What do we think? Most of which I don't recognise, but I'm sure all come from somewhere. Hmm. Nothing's screaming out at me. Uh, I want something which is fairly recognisable. I was hoping something that was vaguely saltire-esque. And add in the Scottish elements. Ah, we'll go with this one. That seems good enough. All right. Which of the following best describes your background? Uh, born in America, emigrated, lived outside of America, and we came for the war, or were a professional officer? Okay, well, uh, we're going to say that we're a professional officer. Maybe not employed, but that's what we were doing. Next question. As a non-American, how did we end up receiving American officers' rank and positions? Uh, fellow immigrants, maybe. Experience from conflicts, maybe you could go that one. Or previous military experience, now that sounds more sensible. We are a professional soldier. Do I want to protect the constitution? Not really. Fight when my home, family and loved ones? Well, no. Uh, I want to experience new adventures and have an interesting career. Well, kind of. Slash advancement. That's really what we want. Um... Not the, I'm not the glory hound, that's not what I've got in my mind, it's just more about uh, social advancement and standing and prosperity rather than fame. Fame's good, and that's part of that. Which of the following best traits are reaction if during the war you are ordered to do something you thought controversial? Keep feelings to myself, carry orders as it's my duty, demand a written order before following it through. Hmm, I would object, explain the moral dilemma. Tell a person question, he's full of it and, and should commit such humbug <laughs> and walk away. Mm, okay, so I'm, I'm thinking a bit more rigid adherence to the military structure. Uh, so we're not going to just complete bluff and bluster and shout at our superiors. Uh, or that one. So I think, I think we're going to go A and B. I think we're going to B. We're going to be a little bit of the... Uh, a little bit Blackadder Ariel. Blackadder Ariel? I can't even say that word. A bit like Blackadder. And we'll cover our rears in terms of getting it written down. It's a bit of a cowardly way out, but that's what we'll take. My relationship with religion. Am I a, a man full of God's fury? Uh, I attend sermons regularly. I live according to the ethical norms set in society, or is it just a tool? Um, I think, I think I'm going to have seen too much hardship in the world to think that, uh, to think that it's all under God's great plan. So, but I think, you know, we'll try and live according to the ethical norms of society. So we're not completely anti-religious, but we're not going to pro pro religion either. If I was insulted by a fellow officer, how would I re react? Turn me over tre cheek. Forgive? Nah, don't forgive. Abstain from punching the rascal and offer a fine self-insult back at him. Or a ven vengeance. No, I think we're going to, uh, you know, we have a little bit of bluff and bluster inside the accepted norms. Uh, what activities do I enjoy the most? Parties, wine, enjoying myself, okay. Social events where I mingle and exchange interesting thoughts. Reading in books or sitting alone. I think so. This is this is more of a kind of socialite, not quite party animal, but about connections and advancement and all those bits and bobs that came with society at the time. Okay, how do you assume your best friends describe you to someone who does not know you? Quick-witted fellow? I like being considered witty. Good manners and taste for fitting the social status of an officer. Oh no, this describes us to a T. Uh, maybe, 
No. It's one of these two. I think we'll go social status. We're a man who craves advancement in, in societal circles. What, which of the following is most important for an officer commanding men to battle? Go all through all the same hardships? Personal example, compassion or administration? Now personally, not my character, but me, I probably lean to more kind of a little bit of bravery, but a lot of just administrative skills. I feel like we need a lot done with that. But no, let's go, and I, I don't think we're going to be the glory hound, but we are going to be a good, we, we do want to be a, a successful and a, a you know good professional officer. So let's go for that one. What virtues do I excel at more than others? Hunting beasts, swordsmanship and horse riding, or proper officer skills, I suspect we're going to go this one. Planning and logistics, I mean, I'd like to take this one because I think logistics is important. Or penmanship and people handling, no. I mean, a diligent army officer is probably going to lean towards logistics handling, but then I'm probably starting at fairly low levels. So maybe we'll go for that. We've been focusing a little bit on the flashier side of officership. A disagreement among your peers. What do I do? Do I ignore them? Remain calm and defend my point of view? Uh, don't say anything or go a little bit rash? No, I think we will calmly, concisely explain why they are wrong. What do I enjoy the most? Impressing others, solving puzzles, order and silence, watching a fire. Hmm. Let's go a little bit highbrow, I think. Which of the following descriptions for Americanism is most accurate? It's about breaking shattle, shackles and universal equity amongst all men. It should be a leader, a beacon of progress and freedom. Good old values, freedom to forge your destiny the way you want. Divine destiny in America is expansion. So I'm obviously, Alexander is, I should say. You know, he's not an American by birth. He's not, you know, he's not beating that drum. Uh, let's go for forging a destiny the, the way you want. Oh, these are quite a lot of questions, aren't they? What is the main cause of this terrible ordeal, the American Civil War? Hmm, states rights, slavery, uh, attacking the southern way of life. I think we're gonna go, so we're, we're, I'm quite happy to have abolitionist leanings. But we're maybe a bit more of a pragmatist in saying, well, you know, the Civil War started because the southern states rose up in rebellion. We are here to crush rebellion and hopefully gain a little bit of uh, something something on the way through. What's the goals we have for military career? Important, influential general, admire by all. Serve my country proudly. I want to see the elephant. I don't get that reference, but I feel like I probably should. Interesting life, full adventure. No, I want to become... I mean, not so worried about the admiration, but I would like to become important and influential. If comparing military careers with other possible options, which are following to best describe its benefits? Social events, parties and admiration, stable job, see the world, best opportunity to serve a higher power. Well, none of this is really what we were thinking, what I was thinking. It's about um, the ability to improve one's own station. Uh, okay, let's take a little bit of vanity, I think, into our character here. Which of fun legend Americans in recent time to admire the most? John Brown, who bravely fought for equity among men. George Washington, the greatest general and first president. Andrew Jackson, a great general and president. Worked hard. Or Zachary Taylor. Uh, ah, let's go for George. Best fits the nature of contemporary warfare. Modern weapons have such overwhelming firepower, it's almost impossible to overcome a well-prepared defense position. It's all about maneuvering around the enemy's flanks to cut his lines of communications. Nothing has changed. Uh, war is nothing but a duel on a larger scale. No, I think we're going to be a little bit uh, uh, kind of sensible about how we believe war should be conducted. And I'm, I'm quite happy to be a maneuvering focused general. Win the battle before it starts. Okay, unit, your unit is advancing over terrain and comes under fire. The men refuse to advance, what would you do? Order them with fixed bayonets, charge across open into melee. Screen sk skirmishers. Fall back. Calm the men down and have them fire back. I think we'd throw out a screen of skirmishers and do a little bit of maneuver. Volunteers with overdue contracts refuse to fight. 
New unit's about to join battle. What would you do? Uh, okay. Guard, essentially prosecuting for desertion. Point the men without weapons to the regiment of their home state if they don't want to fight, let it be so. Have them try for desertion there and then and shot, but extreme. Take the weapons and all of the military gear and let them find a way home or die trying. Uh, I'm thinking either A or B. A is quite rigid adherence to the military code. And I think maybe we'd lean on lean on that as a crutch in terms of difficult situations. B is probably a better answer, but we'll go A. And what's the most important role for cavalry in a modern war? Okay, so here I'm also thinking let's go in as an, an infantry commander. That's going to be our focus here. Uh, so not charging and breakering. So either scouting, harassing, or lines of communication. Or supplies. Ooh. Let's go for this one. Communication. Delivering orders. We done? Not yet. Jeez. Okay, communications to your command are lost. An overwhelming enemy force is moving your way. What do you do? Stand and fight. Order your deputy lead the battle. I run away. Or valiantly retreat. Uh, delaying action. Even if in danger, your commander's battle plan. Charge of enemy head on. No, let's do uh, last stand. I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to charge recklessly forward either. You order to hold a line, but in front of you is even better ground. Hold the ground. Skirmishers and engineers. And a courier. Ah, yeah, that one, definitely. Wouldn't just do it. We'd do a little bit of thought before it. No, I wouldn't go and harass my commander in person. Advancing to flank an enemy position, but the men are dead tired. What do you do? Force march, surprise them. Make sure you reach a flank with fresh troops, but I think as you rest the troops, even if the enemy has time to refuse the flank. Consult you some border rates? No. Dismount for and rush forward with a drawn sword. Uh, yeah, no, just suck up, lads. So, what is the most important quality? Authority? First example. Think outside the box. Quick decisions. Um, I think a lot of these are important. I mean, that's a useful but not necessary. You can have a very boring but still effective military commander. I think quick decisions are very important. But as is authority and personal example. Let's go, let's go authority. We like the rigid military system. Why not? Which of following qualities is an army most important in winning wars? Fighting spirit, unity of command and effort, tactical skills, amateurs study tactics, professionals study supply chains and lines of communication. Ooh, that is interesting. Without functioning logistical trail, no campus campaign will succeed. Uh, I mean, there's, there's heck of logic in that, actually. Uh, let's go for that one. Why not? Which of the following tactical principles is most important, in your opinion? Use of interior lines, economic use of forces, prudent maneuvering, suppress and violence of action or force, um, surprise and violence of action or force multipliers. That's very true. But we, we've said we're going to be a kind of maneuvery type of thought in our approach. And the final question. Before we do that, we should do an age. So why don't we be fairly young? So I'll put it like 31. Uh, let's go for... Uh, let's go for a summer birthday, why not? 14th of June, sounds good. And state of art, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Let's say we come, ash uh, come ashore in New York. Okay, final question. You'll soon be in combat. If you'd only did one of the following before marching out with your unit, which would it be? Gather men, say some inspirational words. Go to a church, confess your sins, throw a party, spend time with the family and loved ones. No, I think... Sort, sort the men out. The questionnaire has been finished. Oh, okay. So, we are captain, we are a volunteer. What have we got here? We are outrageous. Dear. Uh, that's not good. That's not going to help us with advancement. We should have toned that down a little bit. We are... Really? We're a party animals? That's not what I'd gone for. Okay. We're heroic. Seems alright. We are unflinching. That's cold, hold his eyes. Cool. Uh, we have almost no fame. Apparently our initiative and our administration is good. Our leadership is rubbish, so we're going to have to work on that. And we are not as cunning as a fox. He was a professor of cunning from Oxford University. Uh, okay, we've got 1,000 prestige, $100 of money. 
sign me up. Oh, there will be some videos. I am just going to skip through them. Um, I'm sure you can go find them if you're that desperate. They're nice little additions, but I don't think they're strictly necessary. Okay, so here we are on the campaign map. We are in the Army of Northeastern Virginia. We have been appointed the rank of captain, apparently, and we'll be granted command of one of the following units. These are a bunch of brigades. I don't know if I pick one or if I... Uh, or if it just happens. So can I make myself a divisional commander? Oh, I can, and that'll cost a whole bunch of besieged. Do I want to start as a division commander? Or do I want to start as a brigade commander? Uh, oh, let's, let's, let's start as a brigade then, shall we? Second brigade's got 3,000 men in it. That seems like a pretty chunky one. Or we could first brigade. I wonder why it's not worth as much prestige. What I would really like to do is see what equipment they've got. Oh, I can. Apply for command. Interesting. Uh, so who we've we got here? So if I'm going to go anyone, I would like someone who's got better weapons. Uh, second brigade, third division. You do have Springfield rifle muskets. I think you don't remember that. First brigade, third division. Also has rifle muskets. Okay, so we could be under Miles or Mr. Hunter. Well, let's go for a second brigade under Mr. Hunter. That's Burnside's division. Am I really about to replace Burnside here? Oh no, third division, this one. Mr. Wilcox. Alright. Oh, it was another wee vidim, we'll just skip through that. So, if I go... I can't remember if it happens straight away or if I need to... If I need to... Wait, uh, if we go to my OB... Here we go! Leslie! Uh, I'm absolutely going to so it's going to be the, the Scottish Brigade. Lovely. Uh, okay, so we now have our own character sheet. So there's a number of things we can do with said character. Uh, we can spend our money on some items, which do help us out. Uh, we can spend our prestige on getting people within our headquarters. Uh, we can also spend money or prestige on these kind of action things, which help us. Um... So let's maybe go through and do some of that. So, there's a whole bunch of items and they do help with bits and pieces. So that helps the nerves, uh, increases piety. We've got like binoculars, which help with, help with decision-making, decreasing orderly. A division command, okay. Increasing initiative. I don't know if I need more initiative, but I like the idea of having a spyglass. Pack of cigars. Ah, oh, good. Okay, let's go for let's. How much is this? I'm gonna spend probably all my money here. Let's get some cigars. Let's get a uh, kind of spyglass. Oh, I had so little money. Oh, I thought I had a thousand. I had a hundred. Okay, things are slightly different. All right. Well, oh, I spent all my money on a cigars. I don't have any weapons. I don't have a horse. I haven't got any nice clothes. Well, there we go. Well, why didn't I do... <laughs> How about we do some of these actions? So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here which we'll look at as it comes available. Let's start, I think, with this one which says fundraising because that feels like something I need to do. I've got a little bit of prestige left over, so let's get ourselves an aide-de-camp. Who should we get in? And you look pretty darn good. You've got a lovely beard and a nice hat. Come on, Minty. You can be my aide-de-camp. I could afford another one. It would leave me almost no prestige. I don't see that being... Oh, what a beard! Okay, you've got the job. Uh, good. So, uh, we are within the army. You can, within the army, even though I only theoretically command one unit, I can do things like apply for command. I've seen nowhere near the amount of prestige required, but I think that's a good way to ultimately progress. I'd like to take division command and then go from there. Um, I can see my relationship with Heitzelman. We are eh, minus 22%, that's not ideal. I can't, you can ultimately do things like order the army to move. So if I do the traditional movement, if I had uh, the money, I could try and, oh, no, money, prestige, I could spend prestige to try and influence uh, McDowell here and tell him where to move. 
Similarly with the government projects, you can spend influence to convince them to take this project. So quite a lot, that's 24,000. As you rise in the ranks, it becomes easier to influence the more national level things. Uh, but as things currently stand, I can't do much. I will get money through my salary and hopefully through this fundraising thing that I'm doing. And also you gain prestige by fighting battles and by following orders. Uh, let us advance time. So I'm not expecting much to happen, to be honest, for a fair few months. So my original playthrough, it did take a couple of, of months uh, before we actually entered into battle. So you will get some pop-ups, here we go, which I thought I'd leave and, and come up. So I've been given command of a single unit, ba 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 ba, that's all fine. And you get these interesting little pop-ups here, uh, kind of almost like notes to your diary, which I think is really cool. So, scouts reporting our, our enemies nearby, uh, you know, we're not engaging, you get comments like, oh, it's really boring because all we've done has been in camp and drill for ages. So, uh, yeah, it, I do find those entertaining. I mean, while the units are off doing their bits and pieces. Winning at Wilm Wilmington, you'll probably see pop-ups for Mobile Bay and for Hampton Roads and other bits and pieces. A Battle of Wilmington, there you go. So it's nice to get these little pop-ups about the way the war is going. Sorry, I wasn't really paying attention. Where have we gone? There you go. Right, I managed to completely disorientate myself there. So, uh, what I suspect we'll do... I mean, they have changed some of these UI things have, have increased and improved and are much better, actually. Even in the half an hour so I played, they're a lot, lot handier to use than in the uh, original version of the game. So I'm quite excited to get those adjustments for the main campaign as well. As you can see, our money will slowly tick up. We will get our regular salary of $5.77. We will have to pay for our food and provisions, but eventually we will be able to afford something else. I should probably get myself a sword and a revolver next. So I'll need about, I think about 50 bucks for the cheapest version of those. Here you go. Camp life is boring. Drill and inspections, no action. So what I suspect I shall do here, I do not suspect what I know I'm going to do here, is I'm going to put a quick cut until we get to the action, because I would like to include a battle in this first event video. Okay, so we made it all the way to July 27th. Um, and there you go, so just to let you know that nothing has really changed, really changed the map front, but we did complete some fundraising. So I've got, uh, how much do I get? $500 for that. $500. So if we go continue, is this going to jump forward at massive speed? It is. Let's go down to normal speed while I do this. Uh, we can buy a few more things. I did want that spyglass, but let's, I mean, I do want a great uniform as well. But let's start with sensible things like a sword and a pistol. You get different things, and I think these just increase your prestige and your uh, your kind of fame and stuff. Dragoon Saber? I don't really want a Dragoon Saber. We just want a Boring Officer Sword. Or an NCO Sword. Let's go for this one. Uh, I need a pistol. You just get yourselves a Colt for 50 bucks. A Webley Long Spur. Oh, it's a British gun. Let's go for that. Uh, and a horse. I think I'll just get a plain horse. I need an artillery horse. Beautiful. I've got $200 left to my name. How much is my spyglass? $100. Well worth the investment. Spending it fast if I can make it. We need a hat. Quality clothing increases your prestige. Well, that's important. Let's get... That looks like a cool hat. <laughs> I love it. Can I afford a jacket? No. How much are they? Two hundred dollars? Jeez. Okay. I obviously haven't got any more uh, prestige. Although I could hire. I've got enough to hire someone. Subsistence or an aide de camp. Let's grab an aide de camp. Uh, sorry, no, an adjutant general. Oh, I can't afford them. Alright, let's get a subsistence officer. Who do we fancy? They're all fairly much muchness. Let's go for Captain Isaac P. Rodman. Congratulations, you've got the job. Good. Okay, I'm going to put the speed up to max and continue waiting for either my army to move out. Oh, Battle of Charleston. Or for the Confederates to come and attack us. Oh, someone's attacking. Why can't we do that? Ooh. Okay, Union Navy is doing its thing. Uh, you're going to lose over here. 
Out of what? They won? Really? Oh no, Wilmington's uh see, this is uh, Winchester. Alright, I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump to when I actually get to action, because right now I'm just sitting around doing not very much of anything. But yeah, these now have little bits you can kind of click on underneath. Which you didn't have before, I think you just cycle through them. Alright, anyway, I shall see you when there is action. Okay, so we made it all the way to the end of September, and still the um, <laughs> Army of Northeast Virginia sits steadfast inside Washington, D.C., despite being at green readiness, uh, and just does nothing while reports of a variety of our armies. Like three individual battles have occurred now, uh, with the Confederates winning them all, which is slightly concerning. Um, I think they've, so they sent back, they, they routed the uh, Department of Pennsylvania from Harpers Ferry, and then... Oh, I don't know why you jump between these things. Uh, the West Virginia Militia and the Army of Occupation got kicked out of Western Virginia, so not ideal. But we did get a new pop-up here, so we've had a new companion. A young lad has joined our unit's colour guard that comes you to battle. I first thought he was the bravest man I'd ever seen, but recently your officers have started questioning whether his overly fearless actions will get you and others killed at some point. It's difficult when you don't see action. As the men are inspired by his bravery, his presence increases my leadership. I mean, fine and dandy, but I'd like some action, please. Well, this is all going on. One thing I didn't want to talk about was the, again, increased or uh, improved UI. So you can see, uh, you can now show you where your provisions for the army are flowing from, which I think is a great little, a great little addition. Okay, fighting near Pittsburgh, apparently. Come on, my dowel. Move out. So my little test run, I had the Confederates march up to Washington and got battle fairly early on. I'm clearly in the wrong army this time. Let's see what the outcome is. Yay, we won a battle. Excellent. Union Army's on the move. Can we be on the move, please? So I, can't, I don't have the prestige to change command. Okay. We will play the waiting game. Oh, at least I shall wait. You guys will get to jump ahead. Christmas. On a day, Boxing Day, 1861. McDowell steadfastly refuses to leave the capital despite disasters across the Union sphere. Cincinnati has fallen. Half of Kentucky is in rebel hands. They march to Cleveland and then up the lake, up the side of Lake Erie and are threatening Buffalo, although we seem to be moving on without taking it. Uh, Several more battles lost by Union forces. No one opposes us across the river, and yet we do not move. Perhaps the one downside of this, uh, of <laughs> playing in this uh, mode, if you end up in the wrong army, you can sit and twiddle your thumbs for a bit. But hey, it should keep us busy when we go to retake this all. That time, unfortunately, is not yet. I suspect there may not be much movement now until the spring of 1862. So I wonder how long a campaign is really going to feel like. I don't know, but I'm still determined to get into battle before we call this video done. One way or another. So we shall see. Alright, quick update. A year into the war. Um, Kentucky has stabilised. We are recapturing Cleveland. Uh, in terms of overall war progress, um, what the battles one is even Stevens converted to slightly high ca casualties. Unions won a lot of battles out west. Confederates a lot won of battles in and around West Virginia. I haven't moved. I've been stuck in the capital this entire time, which is incredibly frustrating. To be perfectly honest, um, but hopefully we'll get a chance to uh, come. We now have crossed the river and have fifty thousand men in Fredericksburg. Uh, sorry, Frederick. Fredericksburg's down there. Um, and I'm hopeful this will elicit a reaction from McDowell, McDowell who's, got, uh, 
He's got 140,000 men. He's just sitting here. But perhaps in the morning we'll ship out. Go on, come on. Aha! Uh, hang on, hang on, stop it. Oh, we're in the first quest. This is your HQ unit, isn't it? Yes, 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 probably. They've formed it from a, into a multi-core army. So we're actually up here. Okay. Haha! -ha. We are <laughs> taking on 50,000 uh, confederates. Uh, okay, I'm engaged in seed combat. I don't want to be in seed combat. I'm presumably I'm just waiting for other people to join. Assault. Uh, so 41,000 against 100,000 confederates. Give me a chance for glory, but we're just waiting for our reinforcing core. Third core just to go whip in, actually, but at least get second core here. I think this first battle is going to be a, a loss. On the plus side, I saved enough money. Oh, just go away. To buy myself a lovely jacket. So I'm just waiting on uh, new trousers. I can see my stats are increasing, which is good. But boy, do I want to get into a fight. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting prestige for the um, casualties my units are inflicting as part of a siege. Are you supporting us? Or are you just chilling? The Battle of Frederick has ended with the with first core repeating retreating in panic. My command is now a glorious tactical victory. Disaster, Frederick. First Corps Fleeing Pike. I think you're somewhat confused, Mr. McDowell. No, don't mind you sending me. Are you just sending them all in piecemeal? Are you kidding me? Now I'm not in this battle. I hate the AI. Better armies are unstoppable. That's because Bloomin' McDowell's in charge. Promote me. I got like a pittance of prestige and I didn't even get to a tactical battle. Okay. I have not to prestige. Why don't we just send another core piecemeal? Alright, hopefully. Seem okay in terms of readiness. We've got sixty thousand men who are in a good condition. These guys have done a lot of fighting. Maybe send us all in. Because the fourth corps is going to lose here. They just outnumber too much. But hopefully the army's done bad enough that we can maybe send them off. To be honest, I want the 4th Corps to lose here. God dang it! It's funny, the first betrayal uh, game I played, just 40 minutes after noon, I was straight into the action. After, well, a couple of months, but then bang. And I, I was a division commander, I had a great first battle, it was quite exciting. I really enjoyed it. This has been a slight uh, exercise in frustration. Oh, but let's celebrate by buying myself some false treasures. I can't afford it. I have the money. Why will you not let me buy it? Ah, I cannot get these until I'm a division commander. Trust them to keep all the good trousers. So what have I got? I've already got uniform trousers on. So I can go cavalry trousers, but I'm, I don't have a cavalry jacket. So I will not spend my money. Till I can have quality trousers. Okay, keep going. Oh, for the love of God, send out the first core. Who's in charge of my core, actually? Hmm... No, it's McDowell. 
Okay, Dudley has overall army command. Disaster, Broad Street Bridge. You guys look like you're about to do quite glorious things to that Confederate army, from a Union perspective, and I'm just chilling over here. Are we marching? Disaster, Cleveland? Right, they're withdrawing back to Confederate soil, which makes sense. Does Disaster Washington. Oh. <laughs> General Lee? <laughs> ah, I love it. We could lose the war and I won't even fight a battle. Aha! Aha! Okay. Oh, we're at 40 minutes. Alright, what, um... Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split some two videos because this will take a bit of time, but I'm going to release them both uh, at the same time. So as soon as, uh... At this point, you'll be able to jump to the next video and watch this one, but I don't, I don't want to release a mammoth hour long video. So apologies about you having to wait for the action for the next one, but let's see what that looks like. Uh, finally. Finally, after like... Well, almost a year and a half, we get to see the action. Uh, yeah, so... I will see you in that one, and we'll have a look at what that looks like.